media bias, a recurring event that remains unnoticed, but one that still persists. We wake up in the mornings and take out a cup of coffee, ready for a daily dose of news. But what we aren't ready for is the misinformation and subtle bias hidden within each article. Stay tuned to this video and learn how you can combat this. Hello, my name is Rohak and I'm the founder of Empower Code, helping you make a change in technology. Today marks the second episode of my course, Data Science for Media Bias Detection, where I will be discussing the harmful reasons behind media bias and how you can fight against it. First, let's take a look at the history behind media bias. How did this phenomena even come to be? In the 1970s, when reporters first began to pop up, many of them lacked college degrees and biases tended to reflect the upcoming and past experiences of the individual. And as colleges came into view, reporters were shaped by the political views of their institutions. The unanimous adoption of large-scale newspapers made it hard and difficult to gather differing perspectives and altering points of view. One of these large-scale newspapers was the New York Times. The New York Times is a newspaper that I will be analyzing throughout my course. But first, we need to talk about media bias. Let's take our time machine back to the present and see how the paper is doing today. To do this, I access data from MediaBiasFactCheck.com, an independent online media outlet dedicated to educating the public on media bias. Here, we see two reports. On the left-hand side, we see that the New York Times moderate liberal bias and publish factual information that utilizes loaded words, wording that attempts to influence an audience with emotional appeal. While the source appears to be factual, there are subtle attempts at influencing the audience's emotions, attempts that would remain unnoticed had I not visited this site. See, that's why media bias can be hyper-emphasized and overlooked at the same time. It comes in different forms, ranging from subtle to outright opinion-based writing. Now, looking at our second excerpt, we see that while the New York Times looks at issues and current events from a progressive perspective, it also utilizes emotionally loaded language in their headlines. Let's take a look at some of these headlines. All right, guys, I'm here on the official New York Times website and on my computer screen, as you can see, we have some pretty emotionally evoking headlines and text. So the first one we see is the first one all the way up here, which reads, Nation watches anxiously as race comes to furious end. So this uses a lot of keywords, but it also uses some emotionally gripping words, such as anxiously and furious. This is often what bias is about. It's about extracting emotion and making the reader think and feel a certain way. So looking on the left hand side of the New York Times page, we see another headline similar to the one that we previously analyzed. This one reads, early vote shatters records despite pandemic and legal wrangling. So it uses some keywords like shatters, pandemic, and wrangling to kind of dramatize and heighten the effect of the current election. Now that we know that bias exists in large-scale and widely read newspapers like the New York Times, how can we fight against it? Well, as a reader, it is important to highlight the difference between news gathering and news analysis. News gathering is where news organizations do the investigative work of getting the facts themselves. News analysis, however, is where the bias actually comes in. This is where the facts are strung into a larger narrative. If you take note of the distinctions and roles of each department in an article, it's more likely that you will become aware of any misleading information. Next, try and search for signs of emotion, especially in the diction and wording that the author uses to discuss certain parts of the narrative. To put our knowledge to the test, let's look at an excerpt from an article discussing the recent uptake of coronavirus in Europe. First, we clearly see news gathering spread throughout the short excerpt. The first paragraph is purely factual and states the measures and restrictions that were taken to prevent further cases. But if we take a look at the sentence that follows, we see emotion, a key example of the author's opinion interfering with the common narrative. 
Particularly, I want to point you to two words, grim and stringent. While the emotion places emphasis on the grave nature of the outbreak, it influences the reader to think in a certain way. This is media bias in action. Hopefully from these examples and case studies, you are able to learn a thing or two and overall become more aware and prepared as a news article reader. More episodes in this video series are on the way where you will discover how you can use data science in Python to actively detect news bias in the media. Thank you so much for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.